Hello and welcome to Salon de Coco. Today I'm giving River a little booster haircut. Can we talk about gully season? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so Coco, what, yeah. did, what did you do last weekend? <laughs> last weekend? Well, I think you know what I did last weekend. <laughs> gully season! <laughs> Yeah, last weekend uh, we had a lot of fun. We were in the New River Gorge and we were able to do really socially distant, super fun like water rafting. Well, we did the 10 hour marathon. Yeah. So we went, 20, <laughs> we went 26 miles on a we raft. We did a lot of rafting. 10 hours, yeah. <laughs> what was your favorite part about that uh, rafting trip? I think it was cool that I had never been rafting before so the, and you've been a bunch of times when they were telling us about it the place that we were at is like top in the world the world top in the u.s i think they were okay, pretty okay. clear about that but what was your favorite part i was in the front and there were some rapids class five rapids it was like going down in front of a roller coaster like yeah. like <laughs> totally going like straight down into the water like the the water is all like doing its rapid thing and it just seemed like dude am i gonna survive this <laughs> am I, are we gonna make it out of this raft alive but in a really good way because i was pretty sure we were gonna make yeah. it out alive <laughs> we got some good vegan food yeah we stopped in charlottesville and we went to iron Puffles and coffee or something. Yeah. yeah, it was a puff pastry waffle. That was that was interesting. All right. Well, I'm not gonna shave you on a zero. So why don't you put the guard on first? And then on on the way back, we stopped at Glaze Donuts. Yeah, dude, those donuts were good. I don't even think I took a picture of the donuts, no, which is a shame because so. they were freaking beautiful. They had a good Bavarian, they had... Bavarian cream, which yeah. I had never had. I've never actually seen vegan Bavarian cream before. Yeah, me either. I, I like when we run into like random things that are not usually vegan that are vegan that are done really well. Yeah. Cause it's like, whoa, I haven't had that since when I was consuming animal flesh. Okay, here's a question. Uh, tell the story of like when you went vegetarian and vegan. Hmm. I was a big meat eater. I loved bacon and cheese. And then when I was in Indo, I, I basically went pescatarian and everything there is like vegan. So it's super easy. And I think that was kind of my first entrance into how delicious plants are. Mm. And, and my flavor palette started to expand exponentially. Mm -hmm. And I, I really came to the realization that meat doesn't really have a unique flavor profile. It's kind of like chicken, tastes like chicken, mm -hmm. you know? And then it's like, it tastes like wing sauce or barbecue, or it just kind of tastes like what you dunk it in. You know, mm -hmm. no one's really eating plain chicken. Like I've never heard anyone say, oh man, that plain chicken was so delicious. You know? I yeah, love... like people do it when they're like, like workout nuts and mm -hmm. stuff and they're trying to Get the protein. Yeah, yeah. And I was that person. And so I'm in Bali and I'm going to all these places and I'm like, oh, black bean quesadilla with, you know, almond walnut meat. And I'm just mm. like, this is the best quesadilla I've ever had. I was practicing a lot of yoga, like a lot, deep into my studies. And so I met a bunch of people and they kind of kept suggesting like, hey man, if, if you want to deepen your practice, you should go study in India. Rishikesh, you, you've been there, yep. uh, is vegetarian and alcohol free by law. Yeah, dude, who knew there's a place where it's literally illegal to not just sell meat, but also to sell alcohol. Mm. It, it's a really different kind of town because you don't have bars, you don't have like grills, you know, and then, the freaking menus in Rishikesh. The restaurants here in the United States, they're having such a hard time coming up with vegan options. Meanwhile, in Rishikesh, they have huge menus. Do you remember how big the menus are it's, at every single restaurant? It's like Cheesecake Factory at every restaurant. Yeah. I like. <laughs> There's like a million, a million different things that you can choose from. They're all either vegetarian, but most of them are vegan. 
and um, and they're all really really good. I felt really comfortable there. I really liked it. Just like full vegan menu, no alcohol, lots of beauty, mm -hmm. lots of spirituality. And so at that point, I was essentially living in a yoga ashram for three months, and and that was kind of when I went full, full, vegan. full, full vegan. In the first limb of, of yoga, the yamas, uh, there is a secondary branch, I guess, or, or secondary limb called ahimsa, which is the practice of, of nonviolence mm -hmm. or non-harm, which, you know, um, goes from, you know, what we would assume from an outward perspective perception of like no not doing harm to others mm -hmm. right but which is also inclusive of not doing harm to yourself mm -hmm. um, and so when learning of that i think that had a really big impact on understanding the perception of of how i was harming others and harming myself from consuming uh, animal products mm. and and that had a, a that was kind of the I guess like I'm not going back. And then at that point, having that understanding, I think really pushed me over the edge of, of well, I don't want to bring harm to others, mm -hmm. right? Other, other living, living beings, AKA uh, the, the animals that get killed, but also humans, right? And so mm -hmm. the impact of animal agriculture on the planet, right? And climate change uh, is, is essentially having a, a detrimental impact on the life of humanity. Um, and so, yeah, and two, two sides, I would be, if consuming me, I would be creating uh, harm or violence towards others, right? The human, the human species as a whole, mm -hmm. right? And the animals that essentially are, are killed. And then if we look at it from an energetic standpoint, <laughs> factory farming, you know, these animals are in monstrous conditions, being tortured their entire life. Yeah. They live in fear and anxiety. And so that's the energy that they hold. Yeah. And then they die holding that energy. And then I like couldn't even fathom um, consuming that energy because that would be a form of, of self-harm or violence towards myself. Mm. And so I think those are the three pieces of awareness that I gained uh, from my experience with Krishna and understanding the, the yogic discipline <clears throat> as a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. that I, I don't want to uh, embody or, or participate in any longer. Mm -hmm. what, what was your entrance into? Into veganism? Into veganism. I think for a long time, uh, I didn't like most meat. Like, I realized at some point I didn't even really like chicken. I always tried to make, like, healthy choices, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then I realized, like, I don't even really like it, especially not chicken breast. But um, paradoxically, also, some of my favorite foods were meat products. Like, I loved, like, the fatty meat products, like chicken wings or, or like, ribs or something. Mm -hmm. But most of the other, other meat, I just didn't really like that much. So, um, so in that way, like, I didn't really miss meat. And I, was, I had been vegetarian in college until I moved to South Korea. And I, in like, it's not really not easy to be vegetarian in South Korea. Um, there, there's just like little bits of meat that just kind of like find their way into everything. And so I almost like transitioned out of vegetarianism and then kind of just like forgot that I was ever a vegetarian. Isn't mm, that weird? Yeah. It was a more just like preference based and it wasn't really based on like any kind of like ethics or anything, it was pretty easy to just turn around and be like, yeah, this is fine. Like I can just go back to eating meat and it's fine. And I didn't really think about it. Fast forward, I'm living in Macedonia and they have pretty good quality dairy products there. And I uh, used to have yogurt, which, which like compared to US yogurt, it's a lot more liquidy. Um, I would have like muesli with yogurt every morning for breakfast. And then one day I was like, hmm, maybe I should try it with milk because the dairy here is pretty good and the milk will probably be pretty good. And then I had it and I swear it like it tastes so good. 
that I had two liters in two days of just like milk. <laughs> I was just like pounding the milk. I was like, oh my God. But then I broke out like all over my face. Whoa. Yeah. And then like, especially right here in between my eyebrows. And so I was like, hmm, interesting. Let me look this up. Like, let, let's look at acne zones. And what does it mean when you break out right here? So I looked at it and it's the dairy uh, allergy zone. Oh, yeah. interesting. And I was like, well, uh, let's see what happens when I don't have any more dairy. So I avoided dairy for two weeks and it just like cleared up completely. Wow. So, um, so I was like, well, there you go. I guess I've actually been like sensitive to dairy my entire life and was literally like brainwashed to think that dairy was the medicine because for example, so there's this Winnie the Pooh episode where like Winnie the Pooh, I think, can't sleep. And then he says, oh, well, a glass of milk will help you go back to sleep. So growing up, when I couldn't sleep, I'd have milk and I would get like intestinal discomfort. Whoa. Yeah. And I used to get such bad gas as a freaking kid. Dang. And like, I wouldn't be like farty all the time, but my stomach would hurt like really, really bad. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I would treat it with milk and it would just make it worse because probably the thing that was making my stomach upset in the first place was the dairy. Isn't that crazy? It is crazy. Nobody ever told me that it could be the dairy. So, um, so like all the, I don't know, the light bulb just kind of went off and I was like, holy crap, this is literally poisoning me. So I started avoiding dairy and I, I actually still have a Pinterest board. I'll link it in the description box that has recipes and stuff. So I was like pinning all these dairy free recipes in my Pinterest board. And then Pinterest with its, uh, AI decided to suggest vegan boards to me. And prior to this, I thought that being vegan was like really extreme. I could never do it. It wasn't for me. And then after, at that moment, I was like, holy crap, am I vegan? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> have I just been vegan this entire time? Because I also care about the environment. Mm -hmm. I care about the general welfare of other beings. Like, I'm not necessarily, I'm not really an animal person, but like, Given the choice, like if anybody gives you the choice, like, hey, you can do this thing that's going to directly contribute to the suffering of this animal, or you could just not do it. I, I would always take the not do it option, Same. you know? Same. It's really hard to transition to a vegan diet anywhere or a vegan life lifestyle, like wherever you live. But I think especially when you're in the Peace Corps and you have this feeling of scarcity. I don't know. I just felt like I couldn't do it at that time. But I would just be like thinking about it all the time. Like I have these fantasies about how I was going to do this like vegan lifestyle once I got back to America. And then I realized like, I don't have to wait. I can just do it now, you know? So um, I went into my kitchen and took all of the non-vegan products in my kitchen and I put them in a box. I didn't get rid of them right away, but I just put them in a box and like to kind of set it aside. And then just like went about my life, just making vegan choices. And at first I was vegan at home and vegetarian outside to just mm. make it a little bit easier for me. Cause in, in Macedonia, meat and cheese are like ubiquitous. Like it's very, very hard to avoid them. Um, but that took me like three days and I realized like, I didn't even really want it. I'd watch a vegan documentary or a YouTube video or something every day there's just a point where you just can't turn back. Like you can't unsee what you've seen. And there were some things that I was hearing about the animal agriculture industry for the very first time that I had no idea about. Mm. Um, like. And like, I literally didn't know that um, a cow had to be pregnant and give birth to a calf to, to make milk. milk. I didn't know that either. Yeah. How crazy is that? I know, it's really crazy. Like What? I know, I had no idea. I thought that cows were domestically, you know, bred animals. To produce milk all the time. Exactly. No, that's yeah. not the answer. They literally rape these cows so that they can have babies so that they can produce milk. Yeah, I know. Whoa. It's so sad. Earthlings really got to me mm. because it's really just like in your face. You just can't deny the fact that like this is happening and it's wrong and like, I don't want to be a part of it. Mm. There was like one scene that I'll never forget. 
that was like, so I don't even know what kind of animal it was, but it was an animal that was bred for fur. And, <laughs> and it had had the fur just like ripped off of it. And then it was just like staring at the camera with its like, it's just too much. Gross. It sounds terrible. It's sad. And it's like looking at the camera with this look like, why is this happening? And it's happening because like humans think that, you know, they, we can do whatever we want. Yeah, we're entitled. Yeah. That's very interesting. So we were on that raft, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and something, okay, I have the answer to the question. Okay. Of your favorite part? Of my favorite part. And okay. it wasn't necessarily about the rafting, but our raft guide had like given me a, a, a I guess, divine universal insight on okay. ignorance and stupidity. Do you remember that? Uh-huh. And he said that ignorance can be forgiven because you can be educated, but stupidity is you ignoring your education. And I thought that that was a powerful, like a powerful way to explain those, those two things. Like yeah. you can be ignorant, right? And it's not your fault and, and you can be educated, but if you don't take that education and, and use it practically, mm -hmm. then you're stupid. <laughs> yeah essentially yeah <laughs> and, that, and that really resonated with me uh, like a lot and and to kind of tie that into the vegan thing mm -hmm. i guess the question that i would have for you is do you think do you think eating meat is, is an entitlement no mm -hmm. in the way that we process meat today i would say no because mm -hmm. like we we put no effort at all into raising the animal. We don't even kill them ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, it would be different if A, we needed it for survival. B, we raised the animal ourselves. And C, we killed the animal ourselves. There's some people who do that. And it's for their, if it's for your survival or whatever, like, that's different. But that's not the world that we are living in today. So someone who understands right that there's a climate catastrophe and that, that their impact right can be can be essentially mitigated by choosing a plant-based lifestyle and not consuming animal products mm -hmm. and facilitating the, the beast that is but then says something along the lines of you know but like i'm still gonna eat meat i think that there's a lot of um cognitive dissonance you know that mm. happens um and like I I did it myself. I'm not I can't judge anybody for what decisions they make mm -hmm. because I remember being right in those shoes, seeing the vegan propaganda at my university way back when, and um I didn't believe it. Mm -hmm. Right? Like I I heard the facts, I saw the facts, and I didn't think that it was real and I didn't change. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that was me. Same. That yeah. was me too. Yeah. I think that, you know, we have to be compassionate to ju not just the animals, but to people who everybody's on their own journey. I'm not going to judge and I'm not going to have like strong expectations for others, but like we do need to be real about the facts, you know, mm -hmm. if somebody's going to make a decision, like let it be an educated decision. Agreed. Do you have suggestions on... Uh, let's say educational resources that you would suggest to people who were looking to learn more about yeah so obviously like earthlings was the one that really did it for me mm. but if you're just like curious about the movement and you don't really want to dive into something super intense i wouldn't recommend that movie because it's like probably the most intense because it's the realist um but I think Game Changers is probably my number one recommendation because mm. I think they take a lot of the good parts from documentaries that were made before and just put it into one documentary mm. and then added this whole thing about the athletes, which hadn't really been discussed yeah. prior. So I'd say Game Changers. Me too. Number one. Okay. If so, you're just, yeah, if just, you're just starting you. out. I like what you always tell people because mm -hmm. we, we run into a lot of people and they're always asking us about it. So like, mm -hmm. and, and your thing is always like, it's okay. Just start like with one meal a day or yeah. like one meal a week. And like, because it's a big learning curve, mm -hmm. right? You, we've spent our whole life being educated in a specific dietary practice that has now come to light. That's actually very detrimental uh, to our health as well as detrimental to the environment. And, but we're also kind of in this system where uh, we don't have a lot of time, 
you know a lot yeah. of a lot of people don't you know they're working uh you know the whole covid situation it's like people are, are just trying to survive at this point and even before covid you know you have the nine to five and then you want to go to the gym and then you want to hang out with friends and spend time with your loved ones and yeah. how much time does that really give you to re-educate yourself on an entire dietary system it's a whole thing it's a whole thing yeah, so but I gotta thing. say, actually, one of the positive side effects that I had from going vegan was this deep sense of well-being just coming from within myself. Mm. And I think that was as a result of like really diving in and learning about what I'm doing every day, how I'm making these choices every day, and then like really being happy with the choices that I'm making. I mean, it could be just the vibes, right? Like it could just be the good vibes from the food from the food or even the absence of the bad vibes mm, from the food yeah. right um there's that but i think there was also just like i just built so much confidence and in, in myself said way veganism and masculinity there's way more women in the vegan world than there are men mm. men are definitely missing an opportunity there yeah but like, what's up with that? I think that from my research, this goes way back to uh, the Mad Men era and to corporate advertising where the meat industry wanted to associate meat with being manly. Mm -hmm. um, and so eating meat is essentially inherently tied now through manipulative and deceptive marketing practices to being masculine, which is uh, an incredibly interesting perspective, especially when, you know, kind of one of the premises of being masculine is to be independent and make your own decisions. But as a masculine and as that person, I used to exist in that who always ate meat and assuming that it was actually an inherently masculine thing, but never doing my own research and never looking at the source to come to the realization that I was being manipulated and convinced that eating something made me more of a man. Eating a particular thing made me more of a man. And so inherently I was being fooled. And then when I came to the realization of like, wait, I'm supposed to be an independent, strong man who holds space and does all these things and, and, and embodies the masculine, but I'm being deceived at the root of my existence with every meal that I eat. That's crazy. Hoo hoo. We think that we're making all of, our de de all of these decisions independently like we're really in charge but when does that actually ever really happen when you decide to go vegan <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> um to a certain degree that might be true just because like we know that there's a lot of money in the dairy industry there's a lot of money in the meat industry but there's not a lot of money in like the broccoli industry, you know? <laughs> I understand why this movement is really threatening to people who farm for their livelihood. Like, I get that. But I don't think that they're seeing where this move movement is coming from and like, they don't get why it means so much to us. Mm. And that it really is a grassroots movement. Like, this, this is not corporations manipulating us. This is us waking up and realizing that like, we don't want to do what they were telling us to do anymore. Definitely. Definitely agree. What do you guys think? You like this, this nice little fade right here? We might be able to blend a little bit more. Blend a little bit more? On, on the it's sides, just like that yeah. part's really hard. <laughs> uh, no, I think it looks okay. Does it? Or like, maybe I could just try a little bit yeah, more. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, no, I know what a request is. 
What are the requests? I've been getting a lot of requests lately for a zero shave. Oh. Yeah. Are you going to do the little bick? The bicking? Like I guess, right but I don't know how to do it. So I'm just going to be just mm. like winging it. So I'm thinking about it, but I thought maybe since it is my most requested video, maybe a 1,000 subscriber special. Whoa. But I got this to all your friends. But I gotta get to 1,000 first, so we'll see. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with us. Hope you liked the haircut. Hope you enjoyed the conversation. If you liked this video, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos from me. And I'll see you in my next video, which may or may not include a bic. Oh, okay, bye. <laughs>